Hello, thank you for joining us today on Biology Weekly. Today, we'll be doing a very interesting activity or demonstration or very simple experiments to understand and explain a biology concept or evolutionary biology or genetics concept called population bottleneck. And we can do this, we all can do this activity at home and it will be more fun and interesting to do it with children. And very little kids can just do this activity for fun just to explore. But older kids and us, we can also do it for exploring and for fun. But we can also learn a very simple and important concept. It's a very important con concept for conservation of environment too, called population bottlenecks. So how does a bottleneck affect a population? So by bottleneck, we mean events like uh, a fire, like a forest fire, floods, droughts, famines, or an asteroid falling on Earth, events like this. And lately, a uh, human intervention has also been a problem where we just go hunting animals uh, in large numbers or we cause a habitat to, you know, we, call, we, we end up you know, cutting some trees in a forest, let's say. So the animals there will have no problems surviving there. So all these things are bottlenecks for a population in that area. So a uh, population bottleneck, what it does is that it sharply reduces the population size. And this can happen due to all the events that I said. So as we see in this graph here, below we have time and time keeps passing on and on. And that's, so in the beginning, let's say we have a certain population size and at some time, suddenly or due to some human intervention or something like that, a bottleneck event will happen where the population size will suddenly be made to reduce sharply. Sometimes, so let's take this event where this asteroid fell on Earth and then dinosaurs went extinct, right? So that's the case when population reduces so sharply that they go extinct. But at the same time on Earth, there were other species too, but then they survived through uh, uh, over time. So they survived the event, and if some species reduced during that asteroid falling, they slowly started recovering and getting up too. So you can have extinction or recovery happening, and we will talk about that today. So first, we'll do this first activity or experiment, and for this, you will need different colored balls. So I have uh, three different colored balls here. You don't necessarily, if you don't have these children's toys or balls, you can use Lego building blocks, anything. Just three different colors we need. You can use beads, different colored rocks. So purposely, I have ensured that one color is low in number, then another color is medium number, and then the color white, in my case, is large in number. So. For experiment one, you can do something like this. And this can be an example of, let's say, flowers. So like rose comes in different colors, right? Red, uh, I've seen green and blue as well, or peach, white, pink. So we can take this as some flowers, the same species, but different genes. So we remember genes produce different colors or cause different colors. So we can take this as a flower species with different colors or an insect species with different colors or some other animal population with different genetic variation. And each variant will be different in number in the population. So this is experiment one, and we'll see what happens to it when a population bottleneck event happens. So all the balls inside the bottle is the population. So this is the entire population. I only had a very few balls and a big bottle, but you can, if you have lots of balls or a small bottle, you can completely fill it up or actually fill it up this much. It's fine. So now this population is going to undergo a population bottleneck event. Okay. And because of the population bottleneck effect, we have these survivors. So you can see that the abundances in the original population, even after it underwent a bottleneck F event, you see the same kind, you see it's similar that there are still more white and there is still some green because there was only one gray. It did not even survive through the bottleneck event. And this means that the gray color is extinct from the population. And the green one just made it and the white one survived a little more. And now in the upcoming generations, you will see more or more of this green and white, maybe a little more of white, or if green develops a sudden mutation which helps them grow faster, then more of green. But this is what happens. Um, there are other kinds of possibilities too. 
and we will see them in the next experiments. So now we'll do experiment two. It's very similar to experiment one. And for that, we have toys, not of different color, but of different shapes. But the idea is the same. So if you have toys of different shapes, like the first one is very long, so it's much broader compared to this neck. The second one is almost the size of this neck or a little smaller. And the third type is very, very small, so it can easily pass through this neck. I think you can all guess what will happen when this goes through a population bottleneck effect, but we'll do this now and see what happens. So this time, again, our entire population is in this bottle and we're make it, gonna make it undergo a population bottleneck event. So, okay, I'm gonna shake it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna shake it harder. So this, so the third time that I shook it, that was when this really big stick came and then the proportion of this little sticks is the next. And I've got lots of these small sticks, obviously. I mean, you would have expected this too. So yes, so sometimes during a population bottleneck event, uh, the fitness of individuals may also matter. Sometimes it's very random, sometimes their abundance matters, sometimes their fitness could also play a part. And this is what we see. And finally, experiment or activity three. For this, I have taken three different colored lentils. So, I mean, if you're in India, then you know masoor dal or split, red split lentils. It comes in different colors. You can take all these three different colors to do this activity. If you don't know or don't have lentils or dal or pulses at home, then you can use, you know, those beads that little children have to make necklaces and stuff like that. You can use those beads. Just take uh, three different colors. So now we have our population here. So we, we have equal, almost equal proportions of this brown, red, and yellow lentils or beads, whatever you find. They're also of almost similar sizes. But this time, as you can clearly see, the yellow one is on top. So obviously when I'm going to like topple it, more yellows will fall, right? And we'll see that. So yeah, what you see is more of yellow in the population. So this time, whatever survived, mostly yellow, a little bit of red, and very few brown as, as they were arranged. Because of they were at the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time. So the where you are, when an event happens also matters, right? So that's another thing that can affect during a population bottleneck event. And the effect depends on location too, and demography and other things. Let us now look at some examples of uh, some population bottleneck events and what happened to some species. In the first example, we look at uh, the American buffalo species. So when the European settlers came to North America, they overhunted them. Uh, one of the reasons that they overhunted them was to ensure that the Native American Indians do not get these buffaloes or are not able to hunt these buffaloes for their food. So the European settlers over extra hunted these buffaloes so much that if you see in this chart, in the 1900s, their number reduced to just 300. But if you see the numbers now, like in the 2000s, their number is back to a good number again. So the first case, when their numbers drastically reduced, was a population bottleneck event that was caused by humans. But then you can see that we humans can also cause positive changes to the environment if we have goodwill and if we want to conserve the environment and protect the environment. Now let us look at this example of dinosaurs, where if you remember, there was this meteorite that hit the earth and then caused the dinosaurs to go extinct, right? So this is an example where a species, in this case dinosaur, could not survive a bottleneck event. Another example is this Toba catastrophe that happened 75,000 years ago. So there was this Toba super volcanic eruption that happened in Indonesia in Sumatra. So because of this, human population reduced to just 10,000 to maybe 30,000 in number, it drastically reduced. So whatever we see now is actually what survived or recovered from that, uh, from that pop population bottleneck event. So we hope this video was useful and interesting for you. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any comments or feedback, please put them in the comments below. Yeah, thank you.